नमस्कार माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन द प्री क्लिनिकल प्रोस्थोस सेक्शन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द टॉपिक फैब्रिकेशन ऑफ ऑक्लूजल रिम्स दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एज वी हैव टू फैब्रिकेट द ऑक्लूजल रिम्स गेट देम अप्रूव्ड माउंट देम फॉर आवर प्री क्लिनिकल प्रोस्थेटिक एग्जाम ओके एंड ड्यूरिंग द क्लिनिक्स आल्सो वी हैव टू फैब्रिकेट द ऑक्लूजल रिम फॉर एवरी कंप्लीट डेंचर पेशेंट now coming to the viva many viva questions are asked from this topic in the pre clinical prosthetic exam as well as in the clinical prosthetic exam during the final year so i will try to cover the practical as well as the theory aspects of this topic so let's begin occlusal rims are also called by other names like the record rims bite rims and the occlusion rims coming to the definition of occlusal rims what are occlusal rims they are the occluding surfaces okay the occluding surfaces which are fabricated on interim or the final denture basis for the purpose of making maxillo mandibular relation records and arranging the teeth so the occlusal rim will help us to record the jaw relations and arrange the teeth now next coming to the functions of the occlusal rims why we want to fabricate the occlusal rims first of all to establish the level of the occlusal plane in a completely edentulous patient okay second we need to establish the arch form of the patient okay the arch which is available then next comes the to record the maxillo mandibular relations the jaw relations that we have to record that can only be done with the help of occlusal rims last but very important is to establish the neutral zone what is neutral zone neutral zone is the area it is the space for the denture where the forces generated by the tongue they are neutralized by the forces generated by the lips and the cheek where we have to do the teeth arrangement so for all these we need to fabricate the occlusal rim. now let us discuss certain guidelines which will help us to fabricate the maxillary occlusal rims first is the cast marking we need to draw certain reference line which will help us to fabricate the maxillary occlusal rim i have enclosed a separate video on cast marking you can just go through that in the cast marking we will have to mark the midline midline is the line which bisects the incisive papilla then comes the canine line which passes posterior to the incisive papilla in the edentulous and it will mark the position of the canines then ridge line the line which bisects the major portion of the ridge you know the central grooves of the posterior teeth they should lie slightly buckled to this line then we have to mark the incisive papilla because the uh, incisors they are usually 7 to 8 mm interior to the incisive papilla after doing the cast marking the occlusal rims should be made according to the arch form if if the arch form is square tapering or ovoid so our rims should also follow the arch form now coming to the inclination interiorly the labial inclination should be arbitrarily kept 10 to 15 degree in the central incisor region as we can see in the picture also now this can later be clinically confirmed depending on the lip support when we are doing in the patient last is the rims they should in in the posterior region the rims should incline inwards towards the ridge crest coming to the dimensions of the maxillary occlusal rims very very important we have to uh, measure it very carefully the height of the occlusal rims if we talk about anteriorly from the deepest sulcus it should be 20 to 22 mm we can see the images for the reference posteriorly from the buccal sulcus it should be 18 mm then posteriorly from the ridge crest area it should be 5 to 7 mm you know this comes in the mcqs also now comes the width of the occlusal rims interiorly the width should be 3 to 5 mm as we can see in the picture also in the premolar region the width of the rims should be 5 to 7 mm and posteriorly the width should be 8 to 10 mm that means the width is increasing as we are going posteriorly 
Now, after the maxillary rims, let us discuss the guidelines for fabricating the mandibular occlusal rims. First of all, a line is drawn from the lingual to the ridge in the premolar area to the lingual of the retromolar pad. Now, this line, it marks the lingual extent of the occlusal rim. The rim should not go uh, lingual to this line. Okay. Second, we mark the canine line in the mandibular arch, a line which bisects the interior portion of the ridge. It marks the position of the canines. Third, we draw the ridge line, a line which is drawn from the canine region which bisects the retromolar pad posteriorly. It will mark the placement of the central grooves of the posterior teeth. Now, this line will bisect uh, the ideal rims which we have made. So, we can just see the line should bisect the rims. Interiorly, if we talk about the inclination, interiorly the rims should be inclined as vertical as the lower incisors are vertical on the ridge. And posteriorly, the rims should incline towards the ridge crest. Now, last point, very important, occlusal rims should be made according to the arch form as we have done for the maxillary arch. Dimensions of the mandibular rims, as we have done for the maxillary uh, rims, for the mandibular rims also, the height, if we see for the mandibular rims, interiorly, we will measure it from the deepest sulcus, it should be 18 to 20 millimeter. And posteriorly, it should flush with the two-third height of the retromolar pad. So, we will mark the retromolar pad divided into three parts. Then we will see that the height should flush with the interior two-third height of the retromolar pad. Width. Width, interiorly, it will be 3 to 5 millimeter. In the premolar region, it will be 5 to 7 millimeter. And posteriorly, the width will increase further. It will be 8 to 10 millimeter. Now, if we see a total of maxillary and the mandibular rims, they form a height of 40 millimeter. Now, this was one of the multiple choice question which was asked in the exam. Techniques or methods to form the occlusal rims. There are basically three techniques which are used to make the occlusal rims. First is the rolled wax technique. Second is the pre-formed occlusal rims. And third are the metal occlusal rim former. The rolled wax technique is the most common technique which we use in our preclinical exercise and in our clinics. Rolled wax technique. Now, this is the most common technique which we use to fabricate the occlusal rims in our preclinical prostho exercise as well as for the clinical work. What we have to do in this first, take a sheet of base plate wax or the modeling wax that is heated over the Bunsen burner and it is rolled into a roll approximately 4 inches long. Okay, then avoid entrapment of air or bubbles. When we are rolling it, air rolling, then we have to keep in mind that bubbles should be avoided. The roll is then adapted onto the base plate and the desired shape and contour according to the arch form is achieved, whether the arch form is square, tapering or oval. Then the wax is sealed to the base with a hot spatula or the curved end of the wax knife. Then wax is added to form the axial surfaces, the labial and the lingual surfaces. The rims, they should taper towards the occlusal plane with a trapezoidal cross section. Okay, such so we will form the axial surfaces in such a manner. Then the occlusal plane is made at an optimum height, which we have just discussed the dimensions with the help of the hot plate. Then smoothen the wax to eliminate any kind of uh, occlusion, any kind of roughness and then we will finally check the dimensions. Second are the preformed occlusal rims. What are these preformed? These are the preformed occlusal rim blocks, okay, which can be purchased from the different manufacturer. These rim blocks, they are available in standard sizes for the maxillary as well as for the mandibular arch. These blocks need to be sealed onto the base plate and then we can adjust according to the desired contour, the arch form and the dimensions. Now the consistency of the wax also varies from soft to hard as we need. Okay. Third are the metal occlusal rim formers. They are the molds. 
okay the metal occlusal rims they can be formed with these rim formers and with the help of the base plate or the modeling wax we can make these occlusal rims in advance to be ready to use okay uh, we just have to seal onto the base plate and then use it they help in achieving the axial contour of the rims which can be adjusted on the base plate and they can be finished when we have to use them four things you need to check in your occlusal rims before you are taking your rims to your mentor for approval first is the arch form you know the contour of the rims should be similar to the arch form which is present second is the occlusal plane it should be even place it on a glass slab and see okay then you will have an idea of the occlusal plane third is the inclination in the anterior region the upper rims should be inclined 10 to 15 degree while the lower ones are almost vertical the last point is the dimensions very important as we just discussed the values and how to measure them finishing and polishing is very important these polished rims definitely help you to provide good grades for your preclinical exercise So that's all for this topic today. I'm sure this video will really help you to fabricate good ideal occlusal rims. Please do not forget to share and like this video. And also you can give your own topics in the comment section. I will try to cover them in the next video. Wish you success today and always.